Hey, what's up everyone? Dragon back again, here to tell you that you should be reading End of an Era. So End of an Era is a 1994 science fiction novel written by Robert J. Sawyer and uh, basically involves a couple of scientists who go back in time to the late Cretaceous period, which is uh, the third uh, period in the Mesozoic era, which is when the dinosaurs reigned supreme, kind of the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and they go to the late Cretaceous, which is was the time period in which a lot of the more famous dinosaurs lived. So you have like Tyrannosaurus rex, um, Triceratops, uh, Parasaurolophus, Pachycephalosaurus, uh, Truodon, uh, and essentially they go back in time and to kind of figure out, to, A, just learn about dinosaurs and kind of basically really discover what killed them off. Um, they figured they can kind of go back around the time when they would have gone extinct to see if it really was uh, the, the, the meteorite that struck the Earth, uh, and, and or was it something else? Was there something going on in the environment and the ecology that would have led to their downfall? Um, now, the meteorite is the more popular theory. It is the more wildly held theory. However, there have been and continue to be still other theories in paleontology as to why they went extinct. Some scientists feel the disease uh, potentially played a role. Um, towards the end of the Cretaceous period, we saw less um, uh, diversity in different kinds of dinosaur species and you know more just fewer species per environment. Some scientists believe that um, based on that, the dinosaurs were already kind of dwindling and we're already kind of slowly going extinct into the meteorite, if anything, was just kind of a, just kind of sped up the inevitable. Um, other scientists, and this is more of a theory that I kind of uh, subscribe to, feel that it was less of that they were dwindling and more or less that the dinosaurs themselves were becoming more refined, meaning rather than having multiple species in an environment to kind of fulfill a biological niche, you were kind of reduced it to one. So instead of having you know, two or three large apex predators, you just needed one. In the case of, you know, Lake Cretaceous North America, Tyrannosaurus rex uh, kind of was one of the smartest of all the large theropods, one of the strongest, the biggest. It's like you really didn't need anybody else. The one species could kind of hold down the job. But alas, you know, there are varying theories and this expedition is to kind of go back, kind of figure out, okay, was it the meteorite? Like, were they were they doing well right up to the end, and then the big rock that fell out of the sky just kind of ruined their plans? Or were there signs? Were, were there symptoms of something else going on that looked like, yeah, it wasn't just the big rock in the sky that might have been, you know, the the closing number, but there were things that were already working against them, and that's kind of what this expedition is about. Uh, and on the surface, it seems like it's gonna, you know, line up to be just kind of your standard time travel science fiction fanfare, which is fine by me, but the story pulls a few twists and turns and you kind of quickly learn that, uh, you know, during the late Cretaceous, Earth had already been visited by other explorers. They really, there was an alien race there called the Hets that are, have already kind of there explore what it seems to be exploring Earth and studying the dinosaurs and essentially they are kind of this blue organic kind of ooze or slime that were essentially they go inside a living organism and take over uh, and basically kind of control them as meat puppets. Uh, a good visual would be uh, if you're familiar with like Venom or the symbiotes from like the Marvel comics where you know it's kind of this, this alien ooze can you know take over a host or whereas in those films it's more symbiotic where the host can kind of be present. In this case they completely take over um, the uh, the organism and you know adopt its memories, everything, they learn everything about it. They, they uh, for momentarily take over the two human characters in the story and in doing so learn you know about humanity, learn their speech, and they're for able to kind of communicate to them through the Truodons, which is a highly intelligent species of dinosaur, of a Calorosaur species during the late Cretaceous. Uh, so it's weird you have like these talking dinosaurs who seem to be kind of struggling with, you know, English, uh, you know, being that they have to kind of speak it through like soaring vocal cords. So uh, I don't want to spoil too much because there is kind of an interesting twist in this story, even though I think once you start reading, you're gonna kind of quickly see where, where this is probably going. Um, but again, it, it's interesting because you, you realize that this is a less about a story about um, the dinosaurs in terms of what happened, and more about 
what was happening within our own solar system, you know, 65, 66, 68 million years ago, you, you realize, oh, there was more going on perhaps in space than there really was on Earth and there is now that perhaps, you know, the neighborhood of the of the solar system that is the you know the Milky Way galaxy was is less uh, turbulent in the modern time than it was you know during the Cretaceous period. So the the story kind of takes a, a hard turn into a much more um, ambitious type of science fiction novel and does a lot of interesting things. Uh, now some of the science in this is is kind of dated again. This is 1994, uh, and you know the, the author displays a great uh, under, understanding of paleontology, specifically vertebrate paleontology, um, and really shows off a love of dinosaurs and an understanding of dinosaurs. Um, and again, there are some things in here that do come off as a bit dated. Uh, the Trudons, we kind of, you know, theorized now, we probably would have had feathering on their bodies if not being completely feathered. Obviously, in here, they are depicted as being scaly. Um, there is still some debate about were dinosaurs cold-blooded? Were they warm-blooded? Were some of them cold-blooded? Were some of them warm-blooded? Uh, you know, the kind of the cold-blooded debate has been kind of, for the most part, you know, silenced now. Uh, I mean, there's still um, discussion about, you know, to what degree they were warm-blooded. Were they as warm-blooded as mammals? Were they less so? But no one really today holds the notion that dinosaurs were like cold-blooded, like modern-day lizards were because we know they were not lizards and uh, the, during this period of time we knew the dinosaurs were related to birds but we since then we've learned that their connection to birds was considerably more significant that the birds are in fact dinosaurs not just related to them uh, so there is some stuff like that but again you give it a pass because in 1994 the author is you know displaying what pretty much was the extent of our kind of knowledge in terms of paleontology. So he does a wonderful job, and I have no doubt in my mind that if he had wrote this story today, he would be showcasing the you know what we now know today about dinosaurs. You know, showing off all that we have learned about them since 1994. So I don't hold that against him at all. And there's a lot of interesting pop cultural things he makes reference to that, uh, you know, he did it just to be fun, tongue-in-cheek, because even though the book was written in 1994, the story takes place in the 20th century. It's around 2000, uh, like 30, I think. It might have been around that time. But he talks and mentions going to, like, you know, seeing the sixth Star Wars movie, and since then we've had a sixth Star Wars movie. Uh, he talks about a lot of the financial crisis in the world, you know. We've had that. He deals with, like, you know, environmental issues, that, you know, that... We've had that, so it, it, it's interesting that a lot of the stuff he probably did, maybe a little bit more in jest, uh, has come true to some degree, and some of the stuff that was maybe kind of, we were seeing the warning signs of happening during kind of the mid-90s, actually did happen, so the book feels very relevant, so it really feels like, wow, you know, even this this was written before a lot of these things happened, so a lot of these things have happened, so that the book actually in a weird way in a lot of ways, in terms of the pop cultural stuff and just kind of societal stuff and history, is more relevant today than it was back then because a lot of the stuff has actually, in fact, happened now. Um, there was this also the weird bit about the new uh, James Bond being played by Macaulay Culton. I mean, obviously, at that time, Macaulay Culton was still something of a household name, less so now, and I don't, you know, don't think it surprised anyone that he's not playing James Bond. But, you know, so little things like that. But so it is kind of interesting. I was very surprised that there's a lot of little pop cultural cues here that he kind of put in there that, weirdly enough, have happened. Um, and the interesting thing about it this time travel story is that you realize that there are actually two timelines running throughout this story. You're actually reading two different timelines. You're seeing the main one, which is a science fiction, the, the time travel story itself. And then you realize you're reading the fallout of that, or if you will, the course correction of that timeline. So you're re re kind of seeing what did happen and then what history looked like once certain things were altered because of that initial timeline. So you're, you're reading, you know, the kind of the cause and the effect, so to speak, simultaneously. And it's very interesting because it, it's worked in very well, actually. It doesn't feel jarring, at least not in my opinion, and, it, and I feel like it flows very well. 
And this is a brisk read. The story is about, it's a little over 200 pages. It's not a long story. And I think that helps in this case because you're dealing with two separate timelines that are kind of running side by side that you're kind of leapfrogging from one to the other. Uh, and I feel like maybe if, it was, if this book was considerably longer, it might start to kind of get convoluted. But because it's a brisk read, it doesn't ever really get too weighty in terms of that. It goes just long enough to kind of tell the story it needs to and kind of, you know, bounce back and forth between these two kind of narratives without making you feel like, oh my God, I'm just getting buried by under all this what's what. Like, no, it keeps it pretty clear, pretty concise, and it does a good job of, again, just balancing the two uh, timelines out. And it creates for a very interesting story. Um, again, it, it's... It, 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 it's a fun read. It's a fun little science fiction read. It kind of harkens back to kind of classic sci-fi adventure, but at the same time, you know, it makes you think, makes you question things. Uh, there are some, you know, again, and, and as kind of a science book, there are certain things in this story where I'm like, nah, it's not the way. You know, I mean, there is this interesting notion that uh, the reason why dinosaurs were able to grow so large is because the gravity was significantly lighter back then, which is an interesting, I guess, theory for science fiction. I don't know. That's the way I would have done it. But again, it, it plays around with a lot of these different ideas and makes you question different things. And the end of the book is actually very interesting. It's actually kind of sad in a way, but it kind of shows you the kind of the causality of, of a time paradox and basically how we view time as a straight line, traditionally speaking, that it's actually some cultures actually view time as more of a circular thing. And uh, based on what we're learning more about physics now, we're kind of realizing that that might have carry more weight than we initially uh, have believed. And this story actually plays around with that idea and does actually something very uh, creative with it and actually suggests something both fascinating and scary at the same time when you really kind of... Uh, conceptualize it in your mind. So again, and I'm not going to spoil what that is because again, I want you guys to read the book. But yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, it's, again, it's a brisk read. It's a little over 200 pages, so it's not going to monopolize a great deal of your time unless you're just a very slow reader, which if you are, hey, it doesn't matter. It's not a race. As long as you're enjoying the book, that's all that matters. So read it anyway. And if you guys can, like, you know, blow through books in no time, well, this will be a quick one to kind of, you know, add another notch in your belt. And I think one you'll really enjoy because it's just classic science fiction. Everything about it is just, you know, really good science fiction storytelling. And someone who grew up reading those kinds of books, it was kind of a nice um, read for me. Because, again, every once in a while, like, you know, I, you like to read different things, watch different things. You don't want to be very monochromatic in terms of your taste. But at the same time, you do kind of have like, your background, where you come from. And that's always going to be your your sweet spot, your comfort zone. And every once in a while, it's nice to kind of just go back to that, just nestle in and it's warm and it's snug and it's perfect and it just, you know, you know, it hits all the marks just right. And, you know, this for me was that kind of story where it was a nice little science fiction story that, you know, a lot of my favorite like dinosaurs, time travel, aliens. It was just, you know, going down the checklist of all the things I love when it comes to sci-fi. So, I know, it, it, it's a fun read and one that, I, you know, I don't think it's, really talked about that much. I, don't, I, I unfortunately don't hear too much about it. But, you know, I, again, I like sometimes recommending books that perhaps you haven't heard of. Not always just the big New York Times bestseller, even though I've talked about a few of those on here, too. It ultimately comes down to the story itself. But this is one of those little stories that I feel like deserves more attention. And again, it's a lot of fun. And it does raise some very interesting questions, you know, and questions that I hadn't really come across as much as, you know, I would think in science fiction. And, you know, questions that I would love to see explored in more of his writing as well as maybe other authors. Again, it's, you know, people are influenced by what they're influenced by. So again, I like seeing these kinds of ideas kind of put out there and getting people thinking and scratching their heads and wondering because that's what science fiction, I feel, really excels at. It gets people thinking. It gets a dialogue going. Even if it's proven like, oh, we couldn't do it that way. Well, we now know that because we talked about it. We explored that avenue. And that's always kind of the fun part about science fiction. But anyway, uh, end of an era. Have you read it? If so, what did you think? And what was your takeaway from it? If you have not, as always, I will put links in the description section below where you can pick it up, check it out, give it a read, come back, give me some of your thoughts. I'm always uh, kind of curious to, to know what you guys think. And if you guys are just kind of big fans of dinosaurs like I am, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you feel this, <coughs> this works as a dinosaur story? Like, 
did you like? I mean, I mean, how do you, in terms of like the science, the, the actual paleontology? I mean, were you as impressed as I was about how you know, in terms of 1994, how up on his vertebrate paleontology he was? Uh, in terms of the science fiction stuff, did you like the ideas he put out? Did you not like them? Just kind of what, what are some of your general thoughts about this story? Uh, you know, I'm always curious, especially when it comes to this genre. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.